got it. Oh, don't you love that little announcement? <laughs> Recording in progress. Um, Alice, so great to see you. So great to see you, Kendra. <laughs> I love how we should have recorded our real first moments of seeing each other on the screen because I feel like that oh, yeah. was more uh, organic. I, I know I can redo it. Oh my gosh, I I really miss you. Oh no, I miss you. I love your shirt. This? Oh my gosh, thank you, Chaser Brand. Thirty-five bucks. It is Chaser Brand spelled C H A S E R. Okay. R A N D. Chaser Brand. Chaser Brand. <laughs> and where are they out of? I have no idea. No. Oh. On Instagram on the internet. Well, it looks like you look fabulous in it. I have to say, I don't think I've ever told you this before, but I really like your style. You have, um, you have, uh, like, it's almost like, I'm trying to think of what, how would you describe your style? Um, it might not be PC, but someone has told me before, lesbo chic. <laughs> I know. I just, okay. Well, I'm glad, that, I'm glad I asked because I would have never guessed that would not be yeah. what, what popped you, in my head, but it could be accurate. Right. I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I think one time, I, this is my best friend. This was like 10 years ago. I walked in with camo shorts, not just, not short shorts. Like, like they went almost to my knee and right. a wife beater. And she was like, that was my first time meeting her mom. And then I was like, yo, and then you know, hugging her. And then her mom was like, is she a lesbian? And my friend was like, no, just because she's hugging me. And she's like, oh, is it because of the camel pants or knickers that she's wearing and the white beater? And so the next time I met her and her mom, I wore a flowery sundress, not on purpose. I just had more time and then I just decided. And then my friend was like, did you do this on purpose? So my mom wouldn't think that you're a lesbian hitting on me. I'm like, yeah. But anyway, she's like, okay, your style is lesbo chic. And I, was oh, like, I, I love that. it. Yeah. Can I tell you, it's funny because I used to bartend at this place where there were, uh, there were a lot of gay people who worked there. And I felt like I, they, one of the things that they would do is um, take the sleeves off of t-shirts, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I was, I, I like to think of myself as a pretty independent woman that doesn't follow many trends, but it took me about three months working there to be like, that looks cool. <laughs> and I'm like, I love that I'm being influenced by lesbians, you know, <laughs> to, for my fashion style this late in the game. Um, yeah. But anyways, I just always love, you always have something in like, you know, memorable to wear that you wear different outfits, I think. Well, also too, don't you think that a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, but I don't think it's um, standard uh, for female comics to always have a sense of style. Is that terrible to say? Very. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. Well, I mean, I feel like a lot of times it's, they're dressing down on, you know, yeah. and I'm, I'm guilty as charged, you know, I, I, um, I definitely don't wear a lot of times what I'd love to wear uh, when I'm performing. Oh, really? Yeah. You do wear what you love to wear. I do, but like, if I'm going to like a bar show in Brooklyn, yeah. oh. I, I'm like I, concert tee and jeans, like, you know. I, I and think depending I, on the venue, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would wear your feather boa to- Yeah, I mean, if I showed up in like my, 60s print something people no one's even going to be listening to my jokes because they're going to be like what yeah. the fuck is this girl wearing yeah exactly because and that's why females tend to dress down right they mm. don't want to be, have distraction or detract from their jokes right 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 or a woman so people are already like having thoughts then yeah. if you dress a certain way people are going to be talking about your top or your body you don't want that but no struggle man being a woman on stage it is. I and mean, people think that just because there's a lot more women comics out there that it's gotten easier. I don't think it's gotten any any easier really for women. There's more of them. And yeah. I feel like some some male producers are giving opportunities to female comics 
uh, I have to say though, I was, I was thinking about this um, on my way to Boston. I was like, you know what? Most of the people who have helped me along the way have been women. Yep. I'm saying this is what I noticed. Yeah. And I'm like, what? I don't know. I, it's yeah. kind of. I'm, I'm with you on that one. I mean, I will say that I, uh, in terms of asking for help, I definitely would feel more comfortable asking another woman, another female comic. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple of male comics that feel like legitimate uh, friends, you know? Yes. Um, but also, you know, kind of feels, to me, it feels a little bit more empowering for women to raise each other up, you know? Yeah, it does. I think that's a huge shift. That's what yeah. I'm seeing, which is like, um, that women are willing to help you. Like yeah. we're, we're, we're all vying for the same thing, but I think we all have so unique, we're, we're such unique creatures, right? We have our own story to tell. So it's not really competition, right? Yeah. Just if this Asian person is yep. going to do well, I'm like, good for her. That means that there's a chance for me. There's a piece of pie. Right. And then it's, and also you're like, well, this is a great opportunity for me to prove that I'm the better Asian comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then well, if you like that, you're going to love this. Hey, <laughs> look how fashionable I am. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, let's just, I want to, um, you know, I will say this in other spots of uh, um, promotion, promoting this, but um, please uh, right now take out your phones and go to your Instagram and follow Alice at momcom, N-Y-C, M-O-M, c-o-m n-y-c um she makes fabulous videos how long have you been doing that for did that start during the pandemic or did i make that up? Say, yeah pandemic okay because and i was locked was... in my house i mean what else can you, you do gotta, you gotta say i mean that really do you odds are who knows if you would have started doing that if we hadn't had the pandemic yeah i love the pandemic yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so you started doing that first of all we'll start with you grew up in Canada I did yeah Where, what what area again uh west coast Vancouver so opposite oh. from Toronto a lot of people are like oh I love Vancouver I mean I love Toronto I'm like no Vancouver completely different vibe it's very west coast laid back uh Vancouver is like LA right they want to be like LA but not as hardcore and superficial but they try, they're tryhards. They, they want to be cool like LA. And then Toronto's right. like, I want to be like New York, right? Um, but Vancouver is full of nature. There's a nice urban life, a clicky and good food, but it was too small for me. So I'm like, I need to go elsewhere. So that's how I ended up in New York. And did you come to New York for college or? I no, I came to find myself. I had a boyfriend in Vancouver and I was like, look, I just need a year. I just need to find myself and then we'll get married when I come back. And then after a year, I was like, I'm not ready to come back. We have to break up. And he's like, I saw that coming. Oh, yeah. How and long ago was that? Oh, this was eons ago, Kendra, like over 16 years, 18 years ago. Oh, okay. And then, yeah. and then you met your husband in New York. Oh, then oh. I met like a total a-hole dick of a guy. Oh. Yeah. And that was like awful, like worst dating experience ever. Oh One, no. And this was right after you broke up with the guy from home? Yeah. Awful. Awful. Like, um, like stories that you would never even, I had, I had content in my standup though, because of him. Right. And I remember inviting my friends to the show and half the stories they'd never heard. And after the show, they're like, I can't believe you made up all that on your own. And I'm like, no, that's true. And they, they couldn't grasp that those jokes were actually real scenarios that I went through. And they were like, oh my God, Alice. I was like, I know. I had to tell you guys on stage. That's why I don't, I don't comedy. Think, I don't think I've heard that part of your, your stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, one day me and you, Kendra, I will tell you the whole thing. It's, it's all right. 
But, um, and then um, that was going on for a while. And then uh, I was taking improv and stand up and uh, then yeah, we broke up and then I, I met my current husband and then definitely didn't leave New York because I had, I had kids. How did you, how did you meet him? Uh, I stalked him on Facebook, but he didn't know that. <laughs> and you'll never find out. Um, we met at a mutual dinner party. My friend was friends with hit him and me. And then he gathered everybody, you know, such like typical New York style people just meet. And then um, I was like, oh, he's a nice guy, nice fella. <laughs> and then stalked him. And then three months later, I was like pinging him on Facebook. And then we just started dating. Oh, that's nice. So you got, you got what you wanted. Yeah, I was a little crazy. I told my sisters, I was like, hey, all I need is one date with him and he'll fall madly in love with me and then he's going to marry me. And they were all like, oh my God, I think she's a little cuckoo. And then uh, six months later, I was like, huh? See? See? And I'm going to have his baby. Uh, did you have, did you get married and then have kids or did you get pregnant and then get married? Uh, we we got married and then we had kids yeah oh, okay yeah. um so now when you were a kid growing up in vancouver like in grade school junior high high school did you do plays and stuff um i tried but i was really shy and introverted and uh i i would i would try something and then i would quit because yeah. i didn't have friends in drama and then the, the people who were in drama were like the popular cheerleaders and yeah. who had tons of friends and so I just like it just made me recoil like I'm oh. like okay I'll, do that. I'll just stay so you quiet you wanted it I did I've always wanted it and I'll, I, but I every time I try to like be a little loud I felt insecure mm. because I'm like, oh I don't have enough friends uh, um, okay that's fine don't no, okay I tried joining basketball I'm like oh, I'm not popular like the girls okay I, I won't do basketball now what about your sisters were they were they into they were not interested in sports or or acting at all just no. interested in academic no not even that <laughs> we're just fine with whoever they were they didn't really aim high and they're both married too right no the young one is uh with her boyfriend living the most incredible life without kids and <laughs> the other one is struggling with a toddler married in vancouver vancouver yeah yeah okay um so then you then you went to college for filmmaking um i went to college for economics because my parents wanted me to be mm -hmm. in business and then i wanted to go to art school so i did a one-year intensive school in film making web design and uh uh internet like internet design uh web design programming and film oh cool was that in yeah. vancouver too that was in vancouver and then after that i was like i'm going to new york after this yeah wow that's really cool so you um you even though you did all the economic stuff afterwards you were like yeah but i still gotta check out this creative part of myself I did because I, I actually um, start working for a bank and my, my dad was like, that's good. That's like the, that's the path, right? You're going to be economics major, work at a bank. And then I was really unhappy. So I quit the bank and then I worked for a design company for like graphic design. Then after that, I was like, I'm going to New York and then worked for an advertising agency. And then um, it, the hours were so hard on me that I went back to banking. In New York? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow, it's crazy. crazy because I was like, I'm never going back to the corporate world. And I knew it after I left the bank. And then um and I went back to the same bank. Ah, what oh I wanna ask. But what did yeah. you do? What did you do at the bank? What like what was your um I did marketing, so it was the most creative role that you could do there, yeah. But I'm also selling mutual funds. Yeah. 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 Not as, want, not, not as yeah. exciting as making your no, own. It was horrible. Yeah, your own content. 
now how does your what is your like your sons and your husband how do do they want to be in your videos what is their reaction to you making videos um my husband is not he does not want to be in any of my videos unless I ask him to I think he's a secret ham though because when I ask him to he's really into it I'm like (laughs) I didn't want to and he will come up with ideas he's like make me say this I think you should do this no I should wear this sweat I'm like "Mm, look this is supposed to be a cameo not a whole 20 seconds of you okay (laughs) And my kids now are like, pay me. They want to get paid to be on it. I was like, no, then, no. I How cannot. I, I can just beat you. Right. How old are they again? Six and nine. And they're oh, already like God. having money. I'm like, no, no, I don't need you. I don't need you on my Instagram, okay? Are they allowed to have their own Instagrams at that age? I don't know. I don't have. No, one. I'm not. I'm going to try to hold off until they're 19. Ooh, that's a good goal. Yeah, I'll try. Um, and what about, I, by the way, I love when you, when you play your husband in the videos. Thanks. I love that. He's so funny. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you should do this to make me look like more of a chump. And I'm like, and some people are like, oh my gosh, I thought your husband was like some short Asian dude from Queens. Yeah. And, and then they meet him. They're like, he's not, I'm like, look, he inspires me on some situations right but this is a character on its own this is right. this other guy like this right. is not my husband anymore. like don't give him that much credit like right. or like some of the stories are from other people they're not all from my husband right and then someone came up to me we went to a party last weekend and someone a dad was like hey i checked out your instagram um i i'm surprised you're so nice to me i thought you hated dads i'm like does my Instagram give off that vibe? Because I don't hate ads. I just I like think they do dumb things sometimes and I just embellish. Yeah. Comedy. Oh my God. It's so funny the things that people come to a conclusion about on their own. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, um, and this other thing that really like freaks me out is the amount of people who actually don't seem to have a sense of humor and like don't get like they're like oh but you said this and you're like yeah that's a like that's a joke do you not understand the concept of humor and jokes that's that's scary to me too yeah Yeah. and when I see it like if sometimes I'll do like stupid rants like something will ignite me and I'll be like okay so blah 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 I put it on and then there's there was a recent video I did and it went viral and it's like stupid, dumb rant about moms who have boys versus moms who have girls. Essentially, I'm making fun of myself, right? I'm just saying I'm right. not invited out because I have boys and right. people, girls tend to do more social things. And right. became this whole argument about like, ooh, she's uh, misogynistic and she hates men and she hates boys. She wishes she has a daughter. I'm like, have you come to a comedy show? Like, um, do you know what sarcasm is? You're scary at projecting much. Like, keep scrolling. Well, I'm gonna have to look at that one. I don't think I saw it. It's have on. To look at it. Is it on your Instagram? Yeah. Um, grab some popcorn and just read the. T- okay, I love There's that no stuff. Right. <laughs> what about? Do you do YouTube too? You know, people say that um, you should, and I here's a tip for people who are trying to get into social media, do YouTube because yeah. you don't want to um, put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. If Instagram shuts down or you lose your account, you're done. So I'm trying to do more YouTube now. What I'm doing is repurposing my videos and and YouTube also loves long form. So yeah. it's, you know, know, you're doing long form movies and, it's, and YouTube loves that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying I'm to, try, I, I, that's my thing is that I, I mean, I, you know, I feel like I won't quit Instagram, but I really want to figure out how to, one of the things that I, I like to do is like stuff like this where, you, you know, that are, that is longer. Um, huh. And also like, I'm trying to think of how to say it almost like uh, not a series, but you know, little episodes that feed off the last one 
Um, and I feel like I've never figured out how to make that happen on Instagram. You know what I mean? It seems like it's not, I, unless there's a way to do it that I don't know about, but we don't like, have to talk about my dreams. I, I feel like um, Instagram is like the shelf life is like maybe half a day. So you yeah. put something out after half a day, you're kind of like expired. But with yeah. YouTube, people are like gonna keep watching and it's better for a series of stuff. And then um, I think Instagram is a good compliment to YouTube. So like a lot of your fascinating stuff. I remember you did like some thriller stuff. Yeah. You did like thriller stuff. I love like thrillers. And you did it in like such a, sh like it was, it was very serious, but it was only like two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. And like, you could really cut those up and put right. them on Instagram because you already uh, did it. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a good idea. And then, and then I'll lead people to your YouTube page. So you're getting yeah. like some cross paths, right? Yeah. Instagrammers, YouTube, vice versa. Yeah. It's funny because I feel like you could probably kill it on YouTube because there's, I've watched some people on there that don't have as much humor and also just kind of like I mean, you're also interesting to watch. You know what I mean? Like some people, I feel like they think, oh, I just turn the camera on. I do, I'm going to be weird or whatever. And they think that's enough. But, you know, I think you, I think it definitely, when people watch stuff like that, they can definitely, you can definitely see when someone has just that, you know, whatever it is, that special little spark that they're really enjoying themselves, that they really like doing what they're doing that this isn't just something it's not like it's not like you're just like oh I gotta I gotta make content today you know what I mean it seems like you're really from my perception of when I watch your stuff it seems like you're really like oh I this is funny to me and I want to share it with other people because I think they'll think it's funny too you know yeah, um, so let me ask you something I know I, on different conversations that we've had not on this podcast that you once told me that you're one of your dreams is to be like a filmmaker in longer form. Am I making that, that true? Yes. Were you, do you agree that you said that at one point? Um, yeah. I feel, like I, 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 um, I feel like I have a lot of good ideas, but I don't have a team, you know, mm -hmm. like, like I could do so much, but I'm a one person, you know, I, I have a tripod. That's like, that's right. like, on my team so I have to like place a tripod then I have to act they have to change I'm like it's exhausting yeah. I'm like I could spend all that extra time writing a script or directing if I had talented actors to work with yeah thing. sometimes I collaborate with people I'm like that was very shitty acting and like I can't work with that I gotta be right that character, right? right like right yeah. <laughs> um... it's easy. So that's cool. So that's good to know. So you are interested in directing. And so you're interested in pretty much all aspects of it. But let's just say hypothetically, let's just say tomorrow you get a phone call and yeah. they, they say, you know, um, you've been picked for this, uh, you know, uh, $1.5 million grant. And we need you to make some sort of visual art with it and bring, you know, you'll, we'll screen it a year from today. Would you do, would you do a feature film, use all the money for one feature film? Would you make it, use the money to make all sorts of little projects? Um, and would, what, would you be, would you direct and put yourself in it? Or how would you handle that situation? Uh, great question. I would use probably 1.2 million of it and I would do a dark comedy and I would definitely be in it and you would be too. <laughs> and someone will die in this movie. All right, good. I love it. I love that you already have an answer for that. Yeah. And so would you, do you think you would continue to do your uh, stuff on Instagram during that year? Definitely. Um, I, yeah. And I mean, I, then you could probably have a team to help you with that too. Yeah. I think the other 300,000 can pay for the team for the Instagram part. 
And um, what, like, if you had a team, what would you have, what, how would, you, how would we see your feed change if you had a team? Uh, higher quality, better lighting, okay. better audio, yeah, uh, uh, better angles. Uh, probably, probably fix my face up a little bit more. Mm. Um, maybe add some characters that I don't have to play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, higher quality, definitely, definitely. And then it would be also repurposed on different platforms. Right. You, you know, it takes time to market and yeah. also like to, to render the films to be optimal for a certain platform. So all yeah. the technical stuff needs to be yeah. taken care of. Yeah. I bet you could probably get a, a good size grant though, with what you've already done. Like, like, I feel like you have proof of concept that you know, that you're an actual, that one of the big things I think a lot of the grants want to know is like, if we give you this money, are you really going to make a product that, you know, not a product, I shouldn't say, are you really going to make a piece? Are you going to yeah. follow through? Is it going to be like consumable to people yeah. that don't know you, you know? And I yeah. feel like you've already proved that through everything you've done. And so I can't, I would imagine that you would be able to get maybe not a $1.5 million grant, but you know, a grant that would make a difference. I mean, like, I think uh, 250,000. Yeah. I mean, I could make a three to five minute short. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can right. make a three to five minute short. If you really want, if you really wanted to, yeah. you could make a three to five minute short probably for a good looking, I mean, I know because I've done it for less than $2,000. Oh, if you, if you work with, you know, if you, you know, ask people to work for one day, get the yeah. shoot all done in one day, yeah. find people who would do it for, I mean, most of the money normally goes to editing anyway. Yeah, you that's know. true. Yeah. But anyway, I, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life. I'm just here to, I'm just here to, to, to share the um you know that you can if you really want to do it you can do it That's yeah all. no now I'm kind of getting inspired and motivated I think you could totally do that I mean if it's something that you really want to do I feel like yeah you could totally do that and um have you have you ever submitted your stuff to any festivals or anything like not not stand up but your videos that never your comedic videos that you make on Instagram? No. Um, oh anyway. yeah, for like some local Asian festival, like I, I submitted something. Right. So that no, I was just curious if, cause I, I was wondering if there's festivals that are geared towards that short form type of. I'm sure there will, there, there are, but I don't know them. Yeah. No, I love that you're walking away with like homework from me. Listen, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just brainstorming because I want to see you get everything you want out of life. Um, love you. Listen, I want to ask you a question. I was trying to remember this before we got on the Zoom. How, did we meet at threes in Greenpoint? Oh my gosh, I was just gonna bring that up. Yeah, is that, is that how we met? Yeah, and I tell everyone the story. You probably well. Uh, I tell everyone the story, like when people say, how did you start a uh, comedy? And I, I give them the, the whole long story where, well, I was doing open mics and I was doing, you know, like uh, shitty shows, like free shows. And then I stopped and then I became pregnant. And then it was baby and me for three and a half years. And then my second baby came along and I went nuts. And I was like, hey, I live in Greenpoint, coolest neighborhood ever across the street like literally 12 steps from my apartment is threes and I kept walking by this mic drop all women line up with token male I kept seeing that. I was like you gotta check that out I'm like you know what no excuses it's right across the street so I go by myself and I'm like oh my god all these feelings resurface and I was just like oh this is amazing look at all these women and then I'm like I'm gonna talk to Kendra that, that the producer the host and I'm like, okay, she's going to probably snub me and laugh, laugh at me. And I remember coming up to you like, hi, it was so amazing. You're so funny. I used to do comedy too. And you're like, oh, cool. um, so do you still perform? And I'm like, no, I've taken a break, you know, cause I had babies and stuff. And you're like, 
yeah, okay, yeah, I'll put you on. Um, can you do like a couple months from now? And I'm like, what? What? Yeah, <laughs> me. And you put me on, and I was like, what? Is she crazy? <gasps> and I tell everyone, I'm like, you know who gave me the start again? Kendra Cunningham. Oh, yes, comedian. I'm like, she gave me the start. Oh. Then I do some shows. Um, I did, I, I, I did like two shows at threes. They bombed. And then I was like, I need another concept. And then that's when I started the bring your own baby uh, concept at word. Yep. And I was like, okay, I think I have like a certain demographic that I can target. And that was like parenting parents. And then that's where, and then I just continue from there, but it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. It's just, I honestly, I did not know that. That's not why I brought it up. Every time. I'm so, I'm so happy to I'm hear like, that. I love to hear Kendra that. With a K Cunningham, two N's, uh, gave me a fresh start. After oh. four years of not being comedy, no one wanted me on their set. No one wanted to hire a mom, Asian, you know. Yeah, well, I'm so, I'm so happy that you stumbled into threes and we had a conversation. I honestly was one because do you remember Steven? Stephen yeah. was um, yeah. okay. Just Stephen. Um, for a second earlier, I was wondering to myself. I'm like, wait a minute. I wonder if Alice. Like, how did this all come about? Did Alice know Stephen? Because I've met so many women through Stephen. Um, mm. So okay, good. I'm gonna tell when I next time I talk to Stephen, I'm gonna tell him I'm taking credit for Alice. Oh, okay. so I met Stephen through you because you're okay. like my friend Stephen, and you said he's Canadian. I'm like, oh my gosh, I too. And then I, I did a Christmas show. It was uh, Who Gives a Gift? And I had him on the line. He's like, oh, I haven't done stand-up for so long. I'm like, you want to be on my show? And he's like, really? So he was on my show. Oh, great. We had, a, we had six or seven people that showed up. And um, yeah, that, that was the last time I saw Steven. And then I saw him again at your show. And I kept looking. I'm like, why do you look so familiar? Yep. No, is he from, I forget, where is he from in Canada? Toronto. Where? Canada, Toronto, Canada. Oh, Toronto. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. You know, he's right now, he's in the Adirondacks um, doing, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I always forget the name of the play. The one with the big plant, the, the, <laughs> the, the plant that eats people. Oh, the Venus flytrap? Yeah. What is that? Uh, Sorry, it's, it's um, a I'll tell you in a second. It is called, oh my God. Uh, uh, too many texts with Steven. Um, okay, I, I, I guess, oh, Rocky, Rocky, no, I guess I'm saying the wrong thing. It's the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <gasps> really? Yep. Oh yeah. wait, he's in a play. He, he's being he's in a play and he's playing Frankenfurter in the Rocky Horror. Cool. Yeah, and up in the Ad Adirondacks. So he's um he's very excited and I was hoping to go see him, but I gotta tell you that Adirondacks is like five a really long drive. It is beautiful though. Yeah. Maybe I'll go. I mean you've um, driven to Boston. Just an extra yeah you know what that's a good point I think of Boston as being like more four hours but it really always ends up being like five, mm. five change. I do have to say I love your city oh, My first time in Boston I really liked it I'm going up there um I have shows there Thursday and Friday this week <gasps> are you driving up there I'm actually taking the train I'm taking the Amtrak this time I thought the Amtrak was so pleasant yeah it's so easy right are you doing your shows um, one of them is called Siren, and it's at um, Portico Brewery in Somerville. Kelly McFarland, I don't know if you have ever met her. She's really awesome. I've seen her. Awesome. I've, yeah, seen her um, it's her. She's producing it. Um, so I'm excited to see her. And then on Friday, I'm doing like these shows at um, The Hideout in Cambridge, um, like Art Center or something. I'm basically doing like four 10 minute sets like wow. just working on new stuff and I mean not completely new like I've tried it before so it's not like I'm gonna but you know trying to tighten stuff up and get new stuff in in my repertoire um mm -hmm. 
but yeah and then I'll, of course I'll see my mother and my sister and some friends and all that jazz but um let me ask you July 15th yes you have the show coming up at the stand yeah what's the I name do. of it what's the name of it um I just called it Onika and Alice night out oh okay and awesome. people just, can get tickets now on the stand website I can take uh, get tickets at the stand uh it's a Saturday at 5 p.m it's like what are you going to do on Saturday at 5 p.m. Like obviously nothing. So just come to the comedy show. Um, I have my suburban moms coming. You know, it's a show for everybody, but the whole lineup are female moms. Oh, nice. And yeah. then do, are you doing, you don't do that, the mom uh, bringing the kids show at all anymore? Yeah, the babies were uh, a hassle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> heckling all the time uh no I don't do that anymore because uh I didn't find a safe venue for them and yeah. uh, it had to be clean and sanitized and I'm like eh, I can't do it at a comedy club or a restaurant yeah. so, no that's true was, yeah and what and do you have any headlining gigs coming up outside of the city or um I'm uh, doing the Rhino Comedy Club where is that that's in like Westchester Oh, oh, good. So yeah. it's like people can get there from, yeah. From anywhere. Yeah. They get there from LA. Is it called Rhino? It's called the Rhino Comedy Club. Oh, okay. Yeah, someone it. told me about that. And I was like, all right, I should do that because it's Westchester. Yeah. It's uh, and then Vancouver, I'm going to Vancouver in August. So I have a couple of That's going to be meetings. awesome. Now, is that, those are shows that, are they, is it a, a festival as well or just- uh, just, uh, just the club uh oh, yep, nice. yep. Uh, oh, cool. national club in canada so oh, nice. doing a couple headlining gigs there and then um i'm trying to produce a swanky night in new york city in the fall uh what was that bar called you and i talked about it one time it's next to la poisson rouge and you're like oh yeah i love that bar. zinc bar Oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I want to do like a really swanky night out there with like comedy nice. news. Oh, nice! I like yeah. that idea. Uh -huh. I know I'm like really thinking of whether I want to keep doing my Broad Squad show or if I want to just like quarterly do a more produced type of thing. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. more, like you're saying, like just yeah. a little more, like with a little more panache and like an actual tickets and stuff like that you know I feel like you can do both I mean I could but like it's also like you know takes a lot of energy yeah the broad squad though I think you can um kind of lessen the frequency if that takes up too much time but I feel like it's kind of like a good workout room you yeah. know yeah yeah building up to that big grand panache and there's always I feel like everyone always shows up in a good mood since it's like has that oh, fun so atmosphere. Fun. every time I've been there it's yeah. such a fun time and yeah. I'm always I always um get new ideas new material from that yeah. it's always so fun and it was so happy yeah yeah that's what I that's I wish all shows were like that I know but not everyone is you yeah and not it's hard to get it's hard to go to a show where there's a ton of women on it too you know yeah I think you produce great shows your energy and, you. and people love you and so. you do too. you always have great shows mm -hmm. I loved your show that you did um wait I always, red room? yeah it was the red room right yeah I love that I love that venue I wish it wasn't on the third floor oh I know that's it's the only so downside. Cute. Yeah. 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 Um, not enough seating. There's not enough yeah. seating. Yeah. That's true. Um, well, listen, I'm going to let you go. I'm, I want to say oh, again, congratulations on making it to the finals of the Boston Comedy Festival. It's huge. Um, Thanks, ride, that, ride, that, ride that wave. Congratulations on Vancouver, July 15th. Always loving your Instagram. Um, I'm not on there as much as I should be, but. I'm going to start getting better because uh, I'm making it an intention. Yes, do it. An intention. Well, I'll, I will remind you. I will like DM you and ask you. I'm like, hey, I've only seen three posts this weekend. What's happening? 
<laughs> yeah, please do. Wait, be, but I'm going to stop the recording, but don't leave, okay? Because I want to talk to you for one second. Thank you. Sandra. Um, see, this is the thing that I hate about myself. Is that, okay, stop recording. <laughs>